Hiya! Do you know what time it is? We're gonna create the next character based on a star sign, and this time we've got Cancer. That could have been worded better. If you've missed Aries, Taurus, Gemini, they're all linked down below and they're kind of interlinked so you might want to watch them in order. If you've been here before you know how it goes. First I'm going to show you the Pinterest board, the ideas, we'll come up with a sketch together. Then later on we're going to be working on the original watercolour painting. Talking about the traits a Cancer has and how this character that we're making fits into the world that we're creating and a little bit more about them and their backstory. But first we need to sketch. This is the Pinterest board just here. This time we're creating a boy. Cancer has a really interesting colour palette. It's like pastel blues and pinks and because I've already done a dark blue I think I'm really going to lean into the pastel like baby blue and baby pink. I'm going to be using these two colours though. I think it's actually a little bit lighter than these but these will show up quite well on the paper. This is the symbol and honestly I'm not quite sure how we're going to be able to incorporate it. The archetype for Cancer is the crab, their element is water, we need to make a note of that one. The ruling planet is the moon, shape is the circle, I don't think we're going to include too many of those. So what actually makes up a Cancer? I mean we'll talk a little bit more about it later but the main gist of it that I got is that Cancers are sympathetic, caring, they are good people. And even though they have some weaknesses, they are inherently good people, so I'm only going to include one weakness. Because mostly they are good. And honestly, I've got a pretty clear idea in mind of what we're going to do. We are going to be doing an elf. I think I've only drawn an elf once before, and I think that might have been for the final prompt of Mermaid. I've got a few pieces here to show you for a little bit of inspiration. This is a Cancer artwork. I love the way that they've incorporated the crab claws in the hair. I think that's a really cool touch. This one I also thought was really cool. I love the way they framed it. Then moving on to elves, just to get a little idea in mind. I want the elf to have silver hair because the clothes are going to be pastel pink and the water is going to be blue. And the reason that water is going to be there is because that's their element. And this elf can manipulate water. That's the magic ability. Moving on to the character now and what the man actually looks like. Honestly, for this elf, I thought of the lead singer from Black Veil Brides. Literally, does he not look like he could be an elf? Look at that jawline. So that's kind of what I was thinking. I just thought that would be a really cool base to start off with. Okay, so that's what our character's gonna look like. I love drawing like a mugshot because I just feel like it's a really good way to actually see what they look like. The last picture on the board is this. This is from Avatar. This is the closest kind of reference that I could find. I want to show the water around the face to actually show that they can manipulate water. I want to do a portrait and have rings of blue kind of going around if possible. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I think that could be really cool. I couldn't find any kind of reference for what I was looking for, so I don't know if I'll be able to do it. There's definitely elements of this face that I'm not happy with. I don't like the shape of the eyes here. I think they're a little bit too sad. <laughs> I'd like them to be a slightly different shape. I think this bit needs to be a bit higher, the eyelid may be a little bit bigger, and this bit here needs to be a different shape. I'm not a fan of the lips either, and I'm not a fan of this. So we're gonna have to change that later on. Basically the water's going to go kind of here maybe and then it kind of circles behind again and then goes like that maybe. Okay, what do you think? This is what we've got for Cancer. We've got the key traits. I think the face needs to be changed a little bit more but this is just a rough idea. We need a friendlier face. We need it to be more anatomically correct. This is the concept. Obviously the pink and blue will be opposites but we've got the water kind of going around the body. The silver hair, the pastel pink clothes. I'm going to get sketching on the fancy paper. I'll see you when it comes to painting.
Let's learn about the Cancer Zodiac. First of all, the name comes from the ancient Greek word for crab, karkinos, which makes sense with the sign being literally a crab. Although, fun fact, the constellation was known by the ancient Egyptians who thought it was a scarab instead. I guess they do kind of look similar. As expected by a crab, Cancer is a water sign showing flexibility and adaptability. It's ruled by the moon, which again makes sense with the moon controlling the tides. Nowadays, because Cancer takes a different meaning, astronomers have occasionally taken to calling people born under Cancer moon children. A person born under Cancer can often be incredibly intuitive and are said to be psychologically gifted. They can read the energy of a room instantly, which makes them compassionate. Although this can be hard to see because as with a crab, they often have very hard exteriors, making a very gentle center. Those that do see the softer side of a cancer will find them compassionate and loyal, taking a caregiver role. The aspect that defines a cancer is this more protective nature. They create sanctuaries, homes, they hold safe safety and comfort in high regard and will do anything to protect their space. This often leads them to avoid conflict if they can, but they are incredibly protective of those they see as part of their home. Three fictional moon children are Gatsby, Steve Rogers or Captain America, and Daenerys Targaryen. All three of these represent the different major aspects of a cancer. Gatsby is incredibly loyal but keeps a cold exterior and very few know what lies beyond the hard shell. Steve Rogers is all about protection and creating a safe home for everyone, whilst Daenerys is intuitive and follows her dreams and wills. Shall we meet the next character in the story? Carcanus was old. Being an elf, long life was to be expected, but as one of the few elf kind to leave their hidden realm, Carcanus had experienced hardship that weighed heavily on him. He'd seen famine, disease, and war rip through innocence, men, women, and children alike, especially war, the long war. As an elf, Carcanus was a proficient magic user with a special connection to water. He understood water on a fundamental level. He instinctively knew how it flowed, where it was going, and how to bend it to his will. Under the power of a full moon, his magic grew exponentially, able to summon vast waves and torrential downpours to wash away his foes. Some scholars suggest that the elves' hidden realm is on the moon, but this is a secret that no elf would dare to share, even if they did know. Because to an elf, home is everything. As the long war raged on, Karkanos saw the horrors that were being inflicted on the innocent. How the safety of their homes were being ripped from them. He couldn't stand by and allow this to continue. So he took up arms. With blade and magic, he protected the vulnerable. Not siding with any army or nation, but whatever wrongs he came across, he worked hard to prevent it. He knew he couldn't save them all, but as long as he tried, that would have to be enough. As the years went on and the weight of what he saw piled on him, Karkanos began to despair. He'd come to this land to experience what a mortal life holds and fell deeply in love with the people. Their lives so short, but they still tried to make the most of it. But in this war, lives mean nothing, a commodity to be thrown away. The people he admired crushed under the faceless, nameless masses. After one truly horrific battle, Karkanos gave up. He decided to go home. He knew he couldn't save them. As he prepared himself, a lone woman stood still in the middle of the wastes of the battlefield. A woman of blue and gold, Lady Gemini had heard tales of a mighty warrior who fought to protect lives rather than to take them. She saw in him both an ally and a potential friend. She pleaded with him to stay, to work with her and end the war quickly. As a being of magic, Karkanos felt the pressure of Gemini's aura pressing against his. She was an incredibly powerful mage. He knew instinctively that if she wanted, he couldn't deny her requests. Her magic was simply too strong. But instead, they talked. For hours, days. Eventually, as the sun rose on the fourth day, Karkanos joined her cause. 
Under one condition, they would take as few lives as possible. The pair were inseparable, Carcanus acting as a counsel to Lady Gemini and as her most trusted sword. There was never a moment the two were apart. As the war started to come to a close, rumours surrounded the pair. Neither confirmed anything, of course, but a late night ceremony under the light of a full moon with less than a handful of witnesses, maybe the rumours had some truth to them. With the war over, both Gemini and Carcanus were happy to fade into legend. The old hero and the timeless lady were content on enjoying the peace that they'd fought so hard for. Sadly, as the consequences of their actions caught up to them both, they parted ways. Lady Gemini went to find solitude and peace, away from prying and angry masses. Carcanos, for his part, did his duty as she asked and stayed away, though never too far. Eventually, Carcanos settled in a quiet town. A small, poor town that needed a steady blade to protect them. Compared to the horrors of war and the hardships he faced with Gemini, the troubles of this little township were so simple. He was more than happy to create a sanctuary for the people. Over time, his soul started to heal. He looked after the town, trained some of the residents to keep them safe, and eventually found a protege. A fiery young girl with bravery that often got her into trouble. So he trained his little flame on how to protect the town teaching her the importance of honour and home. He even found time to go visit his old friend, who is now the woman of the woods. They sat and talked, reminiscing about their past lives or talking about the little town. He often, very gently, pushed her to come to town, to rejoin the world. But she was happy in her solitude, and he would not be the one to bring that to an end. As Ares and Taurus left the town to see the kingdom, he went to see Gemini, looking for that familiar certainty that she provided. But the Gemini he saw was someone he had not seen in an age. She was excited. She had met Taurus. As she gushed about this powerful young mage, Karkanos smiled. He recognized that passion in his old friend, a calling he also had once he met Ares, a student to mold. Lady Gemini had spent so long isolated that the chance encounter with Taurus had healed her soul, just as protecting the small town had healed him. With, frankly, an irresponsibly small amount of preparation, the pair set off back into the world to join their students. As Ares started a fire and Taurus set up the tent, the two were startled by a rustling in the grass behind them. The two women stared at the road, ready to fight these two figures. A woman of blue and gold introduced herself as Lady Gemini and promised lessons of magic for the young pair. The second, an old man with olive skin and slick grey hair. Despite both girls being unsure about Gemini, they trusted the man instinctively. Karkanos smiled behind Gemini's illusion. It had been too long since he had some hope. And that's it, we finally get to meet the old hero. I don't know if you could tell with this painting, but I really struggled with the skin tone. I think it shows, I think it is very odd, but at the same time, he is an elf. So I don't think it's too big of a deal. The skin tone was crazy though. It was supposed to be slightly blue and then it ended up green and now I don't know what it is. I'm happy with the water. I got to use a new blue that I have. It's Helio Turquoise and it's such a gorgeous shade. I love that I got to use that for the water. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's definitely a unique look and I like how different it is. I do like that it looks so different to all the others. However, I did accidentally use the exact same shell pink for the clothes that I also used for Taurus. Completely forgot about that. Completely missed that one. They both had pink in their color palette. And I guess I chose the exact same pink, so there is also that. Another thing is because the clothes are pink with a cute little collar, which was kind of supposed to look like a loose elvish blouse, it kind of looks like a granny. Like the whole piece kind of just looks like a granny in a little cute blouse as opposed to a elf. Hmm, I don't know. That's what I'm seeing. That is, that's what I'm seeing, unfortunately. I still think it's cute, though. What do you think? Do you like this one? Do you like the story? Do you like where we're going? Next up, we've got Leo, which is my star sign, and I'm super excited for that one. We have actually met Leo before, so I can't wait to show you. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the future star signs. And if you're a Cancer, do you share any of these traits? I'd love to know down below. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you on Sunday with a new video. Bye bye.